Hi, I'm Rob and welcome to Bob's Bits Fishing Vlog. Today we're going to look at the dog nobbler. Um, that's a fly that I've been using since the 1990s. Um, it's a really, really simple fly to tie and very effective, especially when there's fry bashing fish about. Um, it's great in the autumn and winter. Um, you can tie them in a multitude of different colours. You can go from olives, blacks, whites, orange. My favourite colour is yellow. Um, I'm going to tie you an orange one today because it's all the stuff I've got in to make one. What you'll need are a few little things that I'll put on the screen just here. Um, so we'll jump into the tie. Um, they've been in my box, as I say, for a long year, long number of years. My granddad taught me how to use these and they've always been our go-to fly if we've been struggling to catch. Um, as you'll see, I've got a number of them in my fly box. In fact, I have a fly box dedicated to laws. Um, so, yeah, great for rainbows um, on UK still waters. You'll enjoy using them. Fish them on a slow figure of eight retrieve on an intermediate line and you can't go wrong. Right, we've got a size 10 hook here. Uh, any long shank hook will do, and up from about an 8 to uh, probably a 12 would be alright. You could go bigger if you wanted to as well. So I'm just going to catch the thread on here, uh, winding back to just above the barb of the hook. So uh, there we go, that's that done. So, right, next thing to do is trim off the thread, and then we're going to look to use our wire next. So, uh, what I'm going to do is attach the wire wind the thread back up somewhere near the eye of the hook um, so we're building a base of wire on the hook here so catch the wire in just like that and then fold back our um, wire onto the end and then tie it back on so that just adds another layer of protection to stop this from getting bashed about it's probably not that important on this particular fly but if you were going to do this on something that's like a body wrap on the outside of a fly then it's probably a little bit more important to, to have something that's going to stop the wire coming free so just wind it back down to again our start point just above the barb of the hook catch a thread in the bobbin holder and then we're going to build up a bit of a body of wire um, I like to fish these with an intermediate weight line um, and adding that little bit of extra weight just gets them under the surface that little bit faster um, and of course when you add your figure of 8 retrieve on um, that makes them move a bit more as well um, sort of jig fashion if you like so just touching turns all the way back up to, to the around the eye of the hook adds a bit of thickness to the body of the fly and then uh, when we get there um, we'll start to come back the other way back down to where our tying threads um, left hanging so yeah that's two wraps of copper wire this stuff is, is really cheap to get hold of this was actually taken from an old transformer um, electronic component really just unwound so yeah just catch it back in again um, and then a little trick here, just wiggle the wire around until eventually it will break. Right then. Next up is our marabou. So all I've done is take a couple of plumes, um, the tips of feathers, uh, made sure they're about the same, try and match them up, and wet them of course just to make it easier. Then just catch them in with a pinch wrap. Same trick as I did with the wire coming up, so yeah, just fold the um, stem of the feather backwards and then catch it in. So again, that'll stop it from getting pulled out if a fish grabs the back of the fly. Um, if it grabs that tail and it's not going to come off. Just trim off the stems, and just make sure it's nice and neat because otherwise you'll end up with a bump in the body. Continually, I just tidying it up really with a bit of saliva just to, to see if it looks sits right. I like to go sort of double the length of the, the hook shank onto that chenille. So um, right, all I do is bite off the velvet off the outside of the chenille, and that leaves a little tag end that you can then tie in easily. Good old traditional velvet type chenille this. Then we're on to our oval tinsel. 
Um, so yeah, we need to tie in about a good six inches of this stuff as well, just to give us plenty to work with. Same trick as before with the feathers and the wire. Tie it in, catch it in with a pinch wrap, and then you'll see we fold it back and then work our thread back up to the top of the hook. So we've stopped there about a third left of the uh, body of the hook to go. Um, that'll leave us space to tie in our peacock curl later on. So touching turns with the chenille, starting at the base of the hook, just above where we tied in the marabou. Give it a few turns here. With this size hook, it's about half a dozen turns or so to get it up to where I like to, to finish. When we reach the area we want to get, I'll just catch it here. Um, so we catch it in with the thread again. Just make sure it doesn't come out. And then trim our chenille off nice and close to the hook. So it's time to counter wrap our tinsel. So this really just is in place to give an extra bit of flash to the fly. It does add a little bit of extra strength to the chenille wraps that we've just put on as well. Makes it a bit more hard wearing. Um, so yeah, just give it a nice evenly spaced turns. A little bit of a gap between each one. Up to where our thread finishes there. And then we catch that in. So there we go. Trim off our tinsel. There we go. Nice and neat. Next up is our peacock curl. So what I've done here, take three even um, lengths, line the tips up of the feathers. And then all we do is wrap those in place. Like that, so they're nicely caught in. Trim off the excess. This is really the finishing touch to the fly. So yeah, just work the thread back to the eye of the hook and then begin wrapping. So we're building a little bit of a head um, onto this hook, this fly now and then when you reach the eye just tie it off tie off the peacock curl um, you can either break or trim off the excess here and you've probably got enough there to tie another one right final touch is to just do a whip finish really three or four turns of whip finish Still relatively new to me, the hand whip finish, which is why I'm a bit slow here. But I'm getting the hang of it. We're all learning, after all. Right, so yeah, that's it. Nicely finished fly, just trim it off. Now what you can do, you can either head cement this, super glue it. Um, I remember we always used to use black um, varnish when back in the day. Uh, which makes an awful mess and it stinks. So I'll just show you the fly at the finish. And there we go. That's our orange dog nobbler.